and we're talking COVID and entrepreneurship. Now, as the COVID-19 pandemic seems to spread across uh, the globe, entrepreneurs are dealing or experiencing a double whammy. So first of all, they are grappling with the disease and you know, trying to stay safe, trying not to catch the disease. And on the other hand, their businesses are failing in most cases as a result of a failing economy. And so do you realize that as much as they are trying their best to stay afloat, Things are difficult, and it's no different here in Ghana as well. While some online services are experiencing a boost in their sales, others in the hotel and um, you know, restaurants departments are unfortunately experiencing difficulties. And today we'll be speaking to one person who is set to launch her business in this COVID-19 uh, era. And also we'll be speaking to a sales coach as well. We'll be giving you some tips so if you're an entrepreneur you have any questions or you have any uh, thoughts to share you can find us on social media at tv3 ghana now let me introduce you to my guest in the studio first he's daniel sapon and he's a marketing and sales expert and coach he's a global sales coach also the head of digital strategy at Tona Tona. so good morning and thank you for joining us i hope thank you're doing you so well much. yeah i'm doing so yeah amazing today yeah thank you very much and also we'll be joined by nana konama and she's the founder of a beauty lifestyle and wellness brand it's called pure persona by nana and is launching today and so congratulations in advance nana all right, and you're welcome to New Day. First of all, let me ask you, even before I come to Daniel Sapon, I want to find out from you. Um, is there a reason you're launching today? Did you have to postpone your launch date as a result of COVID-19? Actually, I decided to launch my brand in spite of what was happening with COVID-19. Okay. Um, yeah. Why, why so? Because, like I said, a lot of businesses are grappling with, you know, losses, dealing with the pandemic and all of that. And you decided to still go ahead and launch during the pandemic. Yeah, you know, for a few reasons. Mm. One being personal, right? I think the pandemic for me made it very clear that like tomorrow is never promised. So it's like, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to go ahead and do it. But on a more strategic level, it also allowed me to put forth a virtual strategy that we had been playing with, sort mm. of thinking through, okay, should we, should we not? And so when COVID happened, it was like, well, at this point, we kind of have no choice but to go digital um, and focus on the digital activation. And that's okay. actually what we built the business model around. Did you have any fears at all? Absolutely. What well, entrepreneur doesn't? But, yeah. you know, the only thing is to, is to move forward. Um, but I was very clear because I looked at, I looked up, you know, um, research. I think part of, part of what I do also as entrepreneurs is to research and to mm -hmm. put data to what I'm doing. I looked at articles, um, I believe Business and Financial Times um, had published an article saying that there were people who basically had never used mobile money and all of a sudden were all using mobile money. And out of those people, over 90% said they would continue to engage with digital and e-commerce yeah. um, even after the COVID period. So that's a 90, I mean, first of all, that's what, you know, triple digit increase in e-commerce activity. And mm -hmm. then 90% of those people are saying they're gonna continue with e-commerce and digital um, engagement. So I was like, you know what? I think I'm onto Still something. Still go. Here. Okay, that's very brazen of you. But Daniel, let me ask you, because we do understand that the sports um, sector, entertainment, um, you know, hotel, restaurants, all unfortunately have lost huge sums of money yeah. because of COVID-19. Whereas yeah. the video games, online shopping, you know, centers and all that, have experienced a boost. Yes. Now you, uh, first of all, let's talk about Tonaton because that's an online. Yes. Um, how have you benefited from COVID-19 as against someone who may have lost so much money? Okay, thank you very much. So um, this COVID-19 has actually brought about the reality of something I've been talking about all these years. Mm -hmm. The world is going digital and the world is going online. So if you're not taking advantage of the online space, you end up spending a lot of money mm -hmm. and spending a lot of time to catch up with your competitors. Yeah. So, for example, during the lockdown, everybody was online. So, for example, everybody who has an online business had traffic on their site. Yeah. And when you have traffic on your site, it's aligning with your sales funnel. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I may not be interested in buying, for example, this amazing Coco, product you have Coco here. Dairy, yes. But because I'm always online, maybe on Instagram or on Facebook, I'll keep seeing it. Mm -hmm. And immediately, I'm already in their marketing funnel. That is in awareness. Yeah. So it's very possible that in the next few weeks or few months, when I'm planning to buy something, is, there, is uh, that, that product I'm going to buy. Yeah. Yeah. So, for example, for a business like Tonaton, our traffic surged. A lot mm -hmm. of people were coming on site. Mm. And same with every single online business. 
People who are interested, people who are not interested, people who are just browsing the internet and see your ad somewhere are going to come to your site. Mm. Some may be hot leads who may buy immediately, but some are very warm and cold leads. And eventually, within the next few weeks, months, they'll either recommend someone or buy or from buy. you. So did it translate into sales? It always does. For the online yes. shops as well. Yes. But you're a coach, so I'm sure that there are some entrepreneurs who came to you complaining about the effect of COVID-19 on their business. That's true. Give us uh, a brief review of what really went down with some of these entrepreneurs. Okay, so um, I actually had more consultations from the month of April uh -huh. and May than I've had, I mean, this entire year. Because a lot of people were now confused what is the next step to take to grow their business? Mm -hmm. And I always tell people that you must, your business must be fluid, like water. You see, water fits in any bottle. So when the circumstances change, or when the bottles change in life, you must be able to fit in that bottle. Mm. So during that period, for example, one of the complaints people were having was no, low sales. Mm -hmm. One of the things people were asking was uh, their client's loyalty was not working and all that. Uh, some of them too weren't able to deliver their products and all that. Yeah. And that's understandable because, I mean, per... Um, Per the projections, the world is going to lose about 2.7 trillion. Mm -hmm. The global economy is going to lose. So it's going to affect everyone one way or the other. But you being in a particular industry should find a way to, to take advantage of it, to make the best out of it. Okay. So one thing I kept making them understand is that this is the time to really understand the skill of sales. Because a lot of entrepreneurs start their businesses and they get quality products. And they feel like, I have a business plan, I have quality products, so from now I'm going to make sales. Mm -hmm. But that is not how business works. You can have the, a quality product and still not sell. Why so? Because quality products don't sell themselves. Yeah. You see, imagine, for example, I've not bought this before, I've not tasted it. Yeah. This but is Coco Dairy, by the way. Coco Dairy, yes. But, but the thing is that before you taste it, you buy it. Mm -hmm. That means that people buy or people give out their money even before they can taste your quality product or service. Okay. So that means that there's an art to make people buy and give you their money first. And it's only after they buy that your quality product matters. No, but in this case, it's not like people don't want to buy. Mm -hmm. But it's because, unfortunately, there was a lockdown at a point. Yes. People are losing their jobs. Yes. They are not getting paid yes. at all, or maybe even just getting paid half of the salary. Yes, yes, So yes. they don't have spending money as much as they would have had, maybe yes. in January. Yes. So it's not as if you're not positioning your product well, mm -hmm. but it's only because the economy is affecting everyone's yes, pockets. Yes, yes. So in that case, what do you do? Because, and I, I, I would want to ask Nana as well, because mm -hmm. in this case, I mean, you are launching this business. You say you've done your homework, you have a business plan and all of that. Mm -hmm. But you do understand that as much as you may have fantastic ideas, people are still dealing with losses. And so how then do they patronize your business over someone else's own? So what are you doing differently? Well, I think what we have to keep in mind is we have to, you, you know, you have to re-examine the metrics of success mm. and as a business you can you know it, you can show up in different ways for people to patronize your business that in the long run would translate into, into sale but mm. maybe in the short run may not be a sale so for instance as a business and you're saying people don't have money right now mm. i know businesses that have introduced payment plans for their business to spread out payments for people so they can pay them in increments mm. i also know businesses that have said okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to show up for my community, right? So you can show up in service, and that is a way that people patronize you. As long as people are listening to you and people are sort of aligning their values with your business, that is also a form of patronizing mm. or patronization of your business. So okay. the idea is that people can patronize you in different ways that may not necessarily translate in a sale today, but can translate in sales later. Because the truth of the matter is, there was data that came out during the 2000, was it 2008 financial mm -hmm. crisis mm -hmm. that the businesses that showed up that were marketable when people did not have money to spend because literally the banks had failed, they ended up making, you know, coming out stronger than the yeah. businesses that did not effectively show up in market and sell their, but you don't always have to sell your products since you're selling your values, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, when you show up in that way, people remember you, and the companies that do not invest in times of scarcity will have to play catch up in the future. Because the thing is, right now, there are other things we're catching up, even if it's not specifically just money. Um, okay. Um, yeah, so. So, your, your plan is a long term plan, not necessarily to make profits immediately, but rather to build your clientele over time so that when all this is over, they can rush to you. Is that what you're saying? 
Yeah, I mean, that is definitely a portion of it. I think what I'm saying is that I am building a business that is, for me, as far as I'm concerned, it's going to be around for a very, very long time, mm. right? And one of the most important things um, as aspects of my business is community engagement and community servicing. It's very, yeah. very critical to what I do. Okay. That we have a very specific brand values that we are communicating. Yeah. And that is something we want to rally our community around first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Okay, but Daniel, in this case yes. where I have bills to pay, yeah. and unfortunately, some entrepreneurs are also complaining that they have not benefited from the fifty percent um, electricity cut from um, from government. Yes, they are not benefiting from the free water supply as well. Yes, so they are still paying bills. Yes, and I'm not making money, but you're yes. asking me to pay bills. I have to probably even pay workers, maybe mm -hmm. half. Yeah, um, you know. So how do I manage all these things? Because then I I'm not thinking of the long term plan and how to maintain my customers but rather how to survive yes. at this point what yes. do i do okay so um i've dealt with the, the sales part so now in relation to this situation this is actually not the time to try and uh, get so much from your customers especially the lo loyal ones this is the time to have empathy and to help them when my business is failing so your business may be failing but if you don't have empathy right now and you try to actually take everything from them, all about sales, 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 it will actually die faster. Okay. Because people are going through a lot right now. The same way your business is going through a lot, the person is also going through a lot. So at this point, for example, one thing you can do is can run a special promo to help your customers knowing that um, everybody is going through a hard time and you want to help them. Mm -hmm. This will give them a sense of loyalty to you. That it's not just about, I pay you, you give me a product, but it's about a relationship. So, for example, there are, time, there are days uh, in the month of April, I did free consultation for clients. And in fact, this, this Saturday, I'm doing a free consultation for a client in Namibia mm. because the person has been loyal to me for two years. Okay. So, I feel like now that she's going through a tough time, it's time for me to also come out and give out something free to help my customers. What about new clients? Because you are talking about loyalty of old clients. Yes. What about the new clients? So, with new clients, if they are already interested in, if they are coming to you, then I mean, that means they have the need for you. Okay. So I don't think you have to, uh, you don't necessarily have to do anything special, but you can also decide that for every new client that's coming during this period, I'll decide to give maybe a 20% or 50% discount. Mm -hmm. And that's something I am doing actually. Okay. For every new client, I feel like everybody's going through a hard time. So this is the time to actually show them you care. Because business has moved from, I buy from you, you give me a product. Yeah. In this uh, uh, generation, business is now about relationship. About, it's not just about a product, but you care about my well-being. You are thinking about me. So mm. another thing I also do is I make sure I'm keeping in touch with clients a lot. Okay. And that's something that every business should be doing. Okay. Call them often, involve in SMS marketing or email marketing, send them even maybe weekly or bi-weekly information about the industry just to give them value. Mm. Just to show them that you're not buying from me, but I'm still giving you value. Okay, so I'm doing all this for my clients to feel better. Yes. What about me? I owe. Mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't been able to pay my loans. Yes. I'm not able to pay bills. How do I also manage that aspect of my business? What do I do? Okay. So in the short term, one thing that uh, actually helps is actually flexibility mm. with your operation. So for example, you can cut down a lot on your costs. Okay. One of the ways you can cut down a lot of costs, for example, for me, I have a lot of meetings. But nowadays, I do a lot of Skype meetings with all my clients. I cut down on full cost. No, but you're still paying for internet, which is also expensive. Yes, but as compared to moving around all the time. It's less? It's, it's, yeah, it's way less. Okay. Another thing is that um, if maybe you can give a, f a form of flexibility to your client. So there are some clients who maybe pay on time. You can tell them that during this period, you can give them a flexible payment plan. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will be willing to give you at least a bit. And that also keep you liquid during the period. Okay. Yes, that's one thing that's also really helped a lot of entrepreneurs. A very flexible payment plan for new clients, for old clients. So if previously you are doing 100% in payment, and especially if you know that the person is, uh, has been a loyal person, you can tell the person, okay, now you can make 50 payment at the beginning of the month, and then maybe at the middle of the month or the end of the month, you make 50%. It okay. also makes them feel like, okay, I can give this 50% now. And I they feel, see. yes. They Nana, feel Nana, what about you? Because this is just one crisis out of many. Moving forward, we do understand that the pandemic is here to stay. I mean, well, coronavirus is here to stay. It will, it will be with us for a longer period. But we'll also face other forms of crisis as well. So moving forward, what is your plan? Just in case we're hit by this. Because you may not have experienced um, the full effect of coronavirus because you are now starting your business. But let's say two, three years down the line, your business is full-blown. You have your customers 
everything is going fun, fine and suddenly there's a crisis. What is your plan? Do you have any idea how you're going to deal with it? Yeah, I mean, it's an amazing question that you asked. I was sitting here just thinking about it when um, my the other um, uh, Daniel, yes, yeah. also speaking. Yeah, Daniel, sorry. Um, that you know, that I think that an, an important point that I think Daniel's trying to get across, and also I recognize, is that you have to build resiliency into your business before a, uh, a crisis hits. Um, that means like really being on top of your financials, really being on top of your customer base, understanding all those things. But to your to answer your question more directly, the truth of the matter is we don't have all the answers all the time. Mm. I think the important thing is to prioritize agility. Um, and I believe that in a digital business, you're given a little bit more room to, to have business agility and business continuity. Um, and so, you know, do put the things in place that help you um, maintain business continuity and business agility. Um, but I think that it's also, if I get to a place where I have a, a, another crisis hits and I have 100, you know, employees and we need to do something or need to shave down, that's going to, we're going to have to do what we need to do at the moment. But like I said, being on top of financials, making sure that I have reserved cash, over mm. at least three to six months. I think that's very one thing we don't talk enough about. We talk about personal savings yeah. a lot, but we don't talk about business savings a lot. Yeah. And we don't also talk about business and why you should have liquefiable assets for your business. Mm. That you know, it, it you know, everybody can walk into Ghana Commercial Bank and purchase a treasury bond. Okay. There really there isn't a you know a, a threshold to say you have to be making this much money to do that. Mm. You can literally buy tre treasury bonds, put them to the side because they're easily liquidable depending on the, the time period that you're giving. But you know, really, I think entrepreneurs need to remember that. Look, save, save and invest. Invest in assets that are easily liquidable, so mm. you always have a reserve cash of at least three to six months or more. The idea is that if everything was to fall apart, do okay. I have, if it takes 10,000 cities to run your business in a month, you should at least every time in savings have enough that if everything stopped, you could continue for six months. Now, not all businesses, you know, take full flight in the first year or second year. Some take five years yeah. to find their footing. And yeah. so in those five years, I'm plying back profit. Yeah. And she's talking about saving money and all of that. If I'm plying back, uh, plying back all my profits, I don't have money to save because yeah. I'm putting everything back in the business. Yeah. So if I get to that point where there's another crisis, I don't have money saved up. Yeah. What do I do? Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's Talk true. Talk to me about that. Okay, so um, the truth is that most startups actually end up uh, plowing back their profits yeah. back into the business. And uh, you must always be fluid and dynamic. As I said, um, pandemics always can, another pandemic can hit. Another uh, issue can hit and then you have issues. But that is actually one of the reasons why you must always be ready for it. So, for example, if you know that another um, pandemic can hit after this, now that maybe you don't have enough savings and all that, this is time to actually start looking for other people to help with your business. Mm. You can start looking for, it can be local, it can even be your family, your friends. Well, so you're talking collaboration? Yeah, collaboration. Okay. I mean... Most people think when you're finding investors, it's about writing long proposals and sending it to someone in the UK to look for investors. I know people who have started business in Ghana. They called all their friends. Everybody's contributing something. And mm. then the business is running. And at the end of the month, they report to the people. So uh, getting pe people to invest in your business is not really about so much big. You need, let's say, $5 million. Sometimes the people around you, if you've built your network greatly and you have a strong credibility and trust, mm. I call that a social currency. Yeah. When you have that strong social currency, people are willing to go all in for you because okay. they know that you always deliver and you are serious about what you are doing. Mm. So I, I recommend that in as much as businesses are trying to grow their, their sales, business and all that, build a strong social currency. Mm. Meet people, help people, give people value and all that because in the end, it all comes back to help grow and promote your business. Absolutely. And Nana, um, well, you wanted to say something quickly so I can wrap up. Yeah. Because I, my I time is to up. Drop, just drop something in there. And also, as an entrepreneur, don't be afraid to invest in yourself. Um, and to get, you know, to take back to what you said about most startups put all their money back into the can't yeah. save. I want to push back on the idea that you can't do anything. You can absolutely save, even if you have to put that money back in. But some of it also just comes with financial planning and also knowing. So I think 
invest in your own knowledge of what it means to run a business. I think sometimes that's what gets a lot of startups is that we don't know and we are not looking for the advice and we're not, you know, I could be calling my friend Daniel over here for business coaching, but like spend that time as well to just reinvest in your knowledge. It's not okay. always just reinvest in the operations of your business, All but right. reinvest in your knowledge so that you can apply those things to learn how even in a difficult time to be the most important thing for your business. So that was just something all I wanted right. to drop in. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Nana. And all the best with this new business, by the way. Yes, all the um, best. Yeah, so Nana Konama is building a, a beauty, lifestyle, and wellness brand called Pure Persona by Nana launching today. So officially, we declare launch it on TV. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you owe us for that, Nana. And also, uh, Daniel Sapon is a marketing and sales expert and coach, and he's been giving us some advice on how you can run your business as an entrepreneur. And if you want to start as well, I hope you learned a thing or two. Remember to build uh, upon your knowledge and know more about the business. So thank you so much. Thank